In this tutorial, what we're going to do is take a look at how to use some of the basic commands in the Linux command line to be able to navigate and move around and look at some different files. Hopefully what you've done at the moment is you're on the, uh, the Lesson 2 page, which is what I've got open on my screen just here, and what's happened fairly quickly is as the uh, web page is rendered, you've got this load of black text that's rolled past and eventually uh, given you this blinking command prompt. Um, before we do get started today, what's probably nicer and will make things a little bit easier for you as you work through the tasks is rather than using the one embedded in the page to actually uh, click on here instead which will give you a pop version of the same thing. So this is the same as this, it just means you can drag it around a little bit uh, and you can continue to read the notes. So what are we going to try and achieve? Let's imagine for a second that uh, when we use a computer we want to access some of the files that are on it. If we're using Windows we could have lots of different things, you might have a drive, you've got your H drive where your work lives, and what I've done on my computer is I've made a new folder, or directory as we should say really, which I've called temp, and inside that temp folder where I am right now in Windows I can see I've got another folder here called treasure hunt, and if I wanted to I could go inside that folder, and there's some more folders, and we can put folders in folders in folders. This is really handy, isn't it, because if I was on my uh, H drive as a student, I might have in the uh, in the root of my H drive, just in the H drive itself, we call that the root, uh, I could have a folder for computer science, a folder for systems and control, English maths, and so on, and then inside my computer science folder, I might have a year 7, 8, and 9 folder, inside the year 9 folder, I might have a Linux folder, and so on, and so it just makes it easier to organise our work uh, when we've got lots of those pieces of information. And it's exactly the same on a Linux system. What's different when we're using the command line though is that rather than having little icons that we can click on and little coloured yellow folders, uh, we instead access it by typing commands instead. Once you get used to doing it, this is actually a very quick way of uh, managing all your files and a very powerful way of doing it as well, which is why people who run huge big web servers and web systems like Facebook and uh, other uh, Twitter and all those sorts of different services, they all run on Linux quite heavily. So uh, let's, uh, let's do something. What we're going to start by doing is setting up our terminal session that we've got here so that it's got some files that we can work with today to actually look through and delete and have a look inside. So if we actually look on the web resource we've got here, it does say type in the following commands. So uh, let's do those. Now what won't work for you, look if I go on here and I think right, I'm going to save myself some time, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go into that other web window, there it is, and I'm going to try and paste that in. Uh, you're going to find that that's not really going to work very well. Okay, you could uh, paste it in there, but that's not really what we're trying to do. What you actually need to do is type the commands in here. So uh, cd space forward slash home. Now don't worry too much about what these commands are doing for now. We're going to talk properly about it in a second. This is just so we can get started. Uh, the next one, cp minus r. Uh, asterisk slash tmp slash let's give that a go as well if need be look you can drag the window around to make it a bit easier uh, so copy uh, slash temp slash ak oh just missed something there missed the asterisk like that. good and then cd space slash temp slash treasure underscore hunt Pop. Okay, if you manage to type all those commands correctly, then what you'll have and what you'll be looking at now is a prompt which looks rather a lot like mine. It'll say slash var slash temp slash treasure hunt, and there'll be a little hash symbol sticking on the end with a blinky cursor. A common mistakes, not typing a capital R just there, that can upset it, but apart from that, there's not much too much scope to go wrong. So we've now got our system and we're ready to have a look. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison as we learn our first command. So where I'm sat here at the moment in temp, okay, so there's the, uh, the root of my drive, and then there's temp, uh, and I'm going to go and sit inside the treasure hunt directory. I'm going to do that as well and double click on there. So on my Windows version of this file system, I can see I've got four more directories, A, B, C, and D. What I want to do in Linux is to learn the command which will list all the directories in the current um, the directory that I'm sat in. And we do that by typing ls, short for list. And what happens then is the computer comes back and says, OK, I can see four directories called A, B, C, and D. Colour scheme is not very helpful. Dark blue on black, can't do anything about that. And I could uh, then at that point learn another command. What if I'd like to see what's inside this A, B, C, and D directory? I need to change my directory, change directory. And the command for that is CD. So CD space 
and then I'm going to look in A first, I think. So type in A and hit enter. Now I'm in the A directory. You'll see that the prompt has changed to tell me the directory that I'm currently working in. And once again, just like before, I can do a list and I can see what's in there. And I'll do the same thing here. So you can see in my Windows computer, I've got three uh, text files, one called other file, that file, and this file, uh, and they're sat in there. And, uh, and I can see those just here as well. The next thing I want to be able to do is to actually look and see what the contents of those files is. And there's lots of different ways we could do it, but one way for a quick peek in the command line is to use a program called cat, short for concatenate, not very helpful, but what it does do, uh, one of the things it does do is it allows you to see something inside a file. So let's do that. So cat, that's the program that I'd like to run, space, and the file I'd like to look inside is this one, other file. So O-T-H-E-R underscore F-I-L-E dot T-X-T and enter. There we go, and you get a little joke that I, uh, I wrote in there, so yeah, a little quip. So that's the contents of that particular file. We could do that again and look at another one. There's, uh, there's a one called that file. I'm going to do it slightly differently this time, because I want to try and save some time. I did say it can be faster, but it certainly won't be faster if you have files that have got big, long names, and you've got to type them all in. So watch this. So I'm going to go cat and space, just like before. Uh, and I'm going to type the first, uh, the first three letters should do it. T H a, and I'm not going to type the rest, so I've typed in uh, THA, so I'm looking for this file here, look, the one called that file. What I can now do is if I tap the tab key, that's the one located above caps lock, what happens is Linux will automatically recognize what I was trying to do, and it'll auto-complete for me. I can then hit enter, and then you get your next, uh, your next whimsical quip appearing on the uh, screen, a bit like that. So those are three commands that we can use to be able to get quite a bit of different stuff done on the computer. Really, really useful. Another command that's quite handy is sometimes uh, it's useful to see whereabouts we are on a Linux file system. If we want to see our present working directory, we can type pwd, hit enter, and the computer will spit out that we're currently working in temp, treasure hunt, and right now I'm in the A directory. So that's pretty handy. There's another thing we can do as well sometimes if we wanted to look a bit more hacker. When we do a list, what we currently just see is a list of the three file names. If I'd like a little more detail, I can ask for a list, and on the end of it, I can type space, and then a minus sign, the letter L for long, and what'll happen is I'll get a little bit more information. So this one tells me the date when the file was created. Well, it was created a minute ago, because that's when I'm making this video tutorial. Uh, it tells me the size of the file in bytes, so this one's the longest, it's got 140 characters in it, it tells me the username of the person who made it, the group, let's not worry about that today, uh, and then these things here, which are called permissions, but again, we won't talk about that today either, I don't think. Now, as I recall, there were four directories, there were A, B, C, and there was also D as well, wasn't there? So I'm going to need to be able to drop back now. One of the problems I've got at the moment is I'm sat in A, and what I need to do is I need to go back and, uh, and then go into the B directory. I'll show you that on my Windows side. So what I'd like to achieve is to drop back one, like this, and then to navigate back into that B folder again. This one's actually empty on this computer. Uh, and let's look at how we do that in Linux. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to change directory, CD, space, and the shortcut for drop back please is full stop, full stop, like this. So I'm going to hit enter, and you'll see that now, on my command prompt, I'm in temp and treasure hunt, but I'm not in A anymore. I could drop back one more if I wanted, and I've dropped back again. So I'm going to quickly now change back to uh, treasure hunt. You'll notice I just used that autocomplete feature. I just type TR and I hit tab. It automatically filled that in for me. And I could actually change a few directory levels at once as well. I could actually say go into treasure hunt and also jump into B for me as well straight away and do all of it in one command rather than doing CD treasure hunt, CDB. Do you see? So that's a little bit of a saving there. I can list. I'll see something in there. I could look into the uh, C directory instead and I could have a little look uh, in there. There's some more folders in there. Look, there's a folder, uh, sorry, a directory called C1 as well. So by chaining together these very simple ideas, you can become much more uh, powerful with the way you manipulate things. Let's think about this for example. From where I am right now, I could type a command that would take me straight into the slash temp slash treasure hunt slash d directory. 
in order to do that, let's think about what I'd need to do. I'd need to drop back one. That'll take me back to um, back to C. So I'm in C1 at the moment. That'll take me back to C. I then need to drop back again. That'll take me to Treasure Hunt. And I need to navigate forwards into the D directory. Don't worry if you didn't understand that. You can watch that part a few times if need be. But I can do all that in one step. Let's have a look. So CD, drop back, drop back, and then go into the D directory. Boink. And I can do a list, and I can see all the things that are in there. So it's your turn now. What I want you to do is to have a little look by yeah, using that cat program. You might recall you uh, saw me uh, using that before. There we go. Uh, I want you to use the cat program. I want you to use CD and LS to try and look through all the different text files that are located uh, here on the Linux machine until you can find the secret password. You'll know it when you see it. Once you find the secret password, what I want you to do is to take the password, uh, load up something like Notepad or your choice of text editor, drop the password in there, and then upload it to borntolearn.com where you can collect this week's badge. You could also pick up the gold badge as well very easily. All you need to do for that is in the same text file that you put the password in, just underneath it, write a brief description of what LS does, of what CD does, and of what CAT does, and probably of what PWD does as well. The answers to all the questions you need today are in the actual written notes as well as in this video tutorial. So good luck with the, uh, the badge task and I'll see you in the next tutorial.